Good morning, brothers. JK, your brother in this struggle here. On my way back from running some errands. And today I want to talk about three things that sometimes are more important than your porn addiction. Now, you might be like, well, JK, if there are three things that are more important than your porn addiction at various times, why isn't your channel about those things? Why is it about pornography? Well, it's because, as I mentioned a few days ago, a lot of brothers don't know what to prioritize. They prioritize something like the out-of-control sexual behavior because they feel that it is the one thing that is sabotaging their life or various aspects of their life. While that is true for some men, the men who typically work with the porn reboot system are men who are already established in life, right? So they have their ish together and pornography just happens to be impacting them in spite of all the things that they've succeeded at. But we have a lot of men who watch this channel who do not have these three things in their life that are important that should be focusing on them. These three things are number one, your financial situation. And I'll explain why. Number two, your fitness, your health and fitness. And number three, your relationship with women. And I'm going to be very explicit with these things. I'm going to break it down to the most primal denominator. And when it comes to your finances, the truth is, you need to have money. You do not need to be wealthy. But you do need to be able to take care of all your basic needs to the point that you have a surplus to get the things that you want. This is the standard. I don't give a fuck what your excuse is for not being there because I have spoken many times on this channel on how broke I have been. I have been beyond broke. I have been homeless straight up and I have pulled myself off. I've been at the point where I've heard people say pull yourself up by your bootstraps and I tried to do this but I live in an environment of absolute abject poverty where pulling yourselves up by the bootstraps was almost impossible because the environment was absolutely nuts. I had to escape that environment for any of that positive self-talk motivation stuff to even sink in, right? So I get that, but I, what I'm saying is like you don't get to make excuses when it comes to that. You need money. Money is the thing that allows you to have freedom. You know, I have people ask questions. We have a financial reboot program. By the way, all these three different things also covered within the porn reboot system. We have a financial reboot program and I was asking brothers for what were some of the things they wanted me to cover, you know, in upcoming sessions. And it was things like, how do you eat on a budget? How do you enjoy life on a budget? These are serious questions for a young man, I think, anyway. Like, if somebody's trying to go to the gym and get jacked, they feel like they don't have enough money for food. And their question is, how do I eat healthy, nutritious food that's going to help me put on muscle? Because you have to eat in a surplus in order to support all that muscle mass. You know, that's not easy. I know I did that for a long time when I was 21 years old, getting serious about the gym. Yeah, I had to like find very cost effective ways of putting on muscle and cooking and eating and so on. But money will allow you to be able to walk into the grocery store and at the very least purchase the things you need for your health goals or just to eat well so you can have energy and be healthy. Money is going to help you if there is a health emergency. There's so many guys, even within our program, who have health issues that they let this health issue fester or they lived with it, injury or whatnot, because they couldn't afford the surgery or whatever was needed to take care of it. Similarly with mental health, there are a lot of brothers who, before this whole telehealth and better help and all these apps that you could have out there, who had mental health issues but were unable to seek help for them because they just didn't have the financial resources to do so. Right? They're men who want to take a woman on a date, but they're unable to do so because they, at the end of the week, they do not have the money necessary to even take a woman out somewhere, right? And, and even if you don't have the money, psychologically speaking, you are just not in the right mindset. You're like, dude, I'm broke. My card may get rejected. How do I even have the physiology to date an attractive woman when I'm more worried about my bank account and it's affecting my self-esteem, right? You should fix that just for the sake of your self-esteem alone. 
Now, when it comes to your fitness and your health, health, you should be healthy. A lot of younger guys can get away with a lot of things. Just because you're young, you will pay the price when you're older. That much I can guarantee. However, when it comes to your fitness and how you look, it plays a huge role, not only with your self-esteem, but also when it comes to dating. I'm going to be very honest with you. We live in a very... How would I say it? The world is getting more and more shallow, and that's because the environments that we're in, a lot of them are online. So you're going to have women who are on all these apps and dating sites who are moderately to not attractive. Well, maybe to me, it depends on who you're asking. But they get hit on by so many desperate men online that they feel that they are exponentially more attractive than they actually are. And because of that, they have the attitude of a supermodel when actually they're not. But this is just normal human nature. If in an online environment you are constantly bombarded by men who are seeking your attention, wanting to have sex with you, it's only natural that you feel that you are more attractive than you are. But the truth is they're only going to go out on dates, they're only going to be intimate with men, for the most part, who are very attractive. So it's only going to be like the top 20% the most attractive men who may also happen to have game that are going to date these women. And a lot of this doesn't just have to do with your facial aesthetics, it has to do with your physical aesthetics. Now, I know this for a fact as well. I'm not some random guy on YouTube talking out of my ass. I don't consider myself to be a good looking guy. I've said this every time I talk about dating. I always make sure I mention that. I'm not talking about this. I'm not one of these dudes on YouTube who's a fucking Chad or a fucking Tyrone, like a super good looking dude who's telling you how to date. I'm an average as fuck looking dude. I know this. On my best day, I am average. If I'm not taking care of myself, oh, I'm an ugly motherfucker, right? <laughs> so I know that I need to be on average. <laughs> like a, a point above average for me, I'm like, woo, JK, you're an attractive man today. But I'm just a six out of 10, right? But I understood, like, shit, like, I'm not going to take risks with my face with cosmetic surgery and shit like that. But let's fix some shit, right? Let's fix what we can physically. Let me fix the body. Let me have an attractive body, right? That's probably the thing that takes me from a five to a six. And that's what I worked on. Now, not only does that help you when it comes to dating, but it also helps when you're around other men. Most people cannot tell from this video but I weigh about 215 to 220 pounds, depends when you're asking, in muscle. That, like literally muscle and about nine to 11% body fat. Just depends on the day, I do have fast metabolism. But people who have met me in person go like, holy shit, JK, you're a big dude. Like you're bigger than, you know, camera lets off. My point with this is that when I was six foot tall, and weighed 120 to 130 pounds, weighted like just like a nothing. I got picked on. I'll be walking around in bars, I'll be walking, but people would bump into me. These are very little things, right? People who would never talk to me now would come up to me and talk to me, right? Now I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to go to the bar and have some, if I'm talking to a girl back then, dudes would just look at me and be like, yeah, I can pull that girl from that dude right? When I was in my 20s. And that would happen quite often. Now, nobody's coming to talk to me, right? My resting bitch face is fucking scary. I'm a big dude. When I walk into rooms, when I interact with people, and this is a very male primal thing. If you don't get it and you're like, eh, well, blah, 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 then that's just on you, right? The truth is that as human beings, there are primal hierarchies. And if you are a bigger stronger or perceived to be stronger man than other people it is going to show and they are going to respond to you in a specific way because we still are human beings we're still part of us is still very primal and animalistic right the stronger dude when violence is necessary if you are not trained in martial arts it's probably going to rip your fucking head off and take your woman and you know that instinctively so when you walk around knowing that most men will not mess with you simply because you are a bigger dude, just knowing that is going to help with your self-confidence. That is why for some of you guys, this is sometimes more important than other things. I have had deep coaching sessions with one-on-one -on -one clients 
where finally we uncovered one of their fears. And one of their fears was that they would get their ass kicked. It is surprising the number of men who struggle with porn, who deep down, I know we live in this civilized society where you live in a neighborhood, you walk around life, you know, with your head down, you're like, who would pick on me? I'm just a regular dude. No one's going to pick on me. But deep down, you have a fear that your ass is going to be kicked. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of times it is fear of success. Men are afraid that if they stand out, if they are successful in any way, if they are with a beautiful woman, if they are going for something, somebody is going to be a hater. Someone is going to yell at them. Somebody's going to say something that's going to hurt their feelings and they're going to go relapse. Somebody's going to hurt them physically or emotionally. This is a big fear that a lot of men have. So again, when it comes to your physique, if there is something that can help you overcome it psychologically, don't get me wrong, as somebody who practices martial arts, I know that your size doesn't have that much. It is relevant. It is not the final say when it comes to a violent encounter. There are many other factors that come into play. But at the same time, we're talking about the psychology of this. And some of you just need to focus on that. And it fixes a lot of things. In fact, I'm sad to say that I have had clients in the past who reached out to me many years later and they said, JK, you know what? Your program didn't help me, right? And I always fix this issue. I don't just ignore them. These are people who trusted me. It didn't work. I was like, why? It's like, well, you know, I did everything you said, but I finally, you know, after this, dude, it was just a physical thing, bro. I went to the gym and I hit weights. I started eating healthy and, bro, it wasn't about all the different steps of the reboot. It wasn't about the different stages. It wasn't about the masturbation checklist. Dude, I just got jacked and looked good and I got late and I stopped viewing pornography. I'm like, bro, I was telling you to do that the entire time in the program, but why didn't you focus on that? Yeah, you did it, bro, but you didn't emphasize it. You didn't make it a major part of the program. It's not a major part of the program. It's something that's relevant, but you, including you watching, you may be focusing on, oh, oh, it's the psychology, I need to rewire my brain. That's important, but a lot of men look at this in a very, like with tunnel vision, that it's just about sexual behavior. When in many cases, it is not just about your sexual behavior. There are many aspects of your life that you need to address. The final part is your relationship with women, gentlemen. Many of you here are also viewing pornography simply because you cannot get laid. I use the word get laid, right? I'm not being politically correct. Because you have been seeing beautiful women, you have been masturbating to beautiful women, you went through puberty, you're now a grown ass man, and you're still not having sex with the women that you feel you should be having sex with. You haven't fulfilled those primal desires. Fuck society, fuck what religion says, fuck what your conservative culture says. We're talking about the shit that you want. Because when we put your religion, when we put society, when we put your conservative culture from whatever fucking part of the world you are from, when you put it aside, motherfucker, you are still at night jerking off to a specific type of person that you cannot get in real life because of one of those aforementioned three things. That is the bottom line. That is the truth. And the sooner you start facing the fact that you want to have sex with other women and addressing it, the better it is going to be for you. What do I mean by addressing it? If you are a married man in a happy, committed relationship, if your wife trusts you, if you have kids, if you guys have built something together and actually you are happy with her and the only little bit of unhappiness in your life is the fact that you want to fuck other women then there are two ways that you can address it you can go tell your wife this is what the deal is and figure out a way around that or you can deal with the issue that is at hand you can accept the fact that that stage of your life has passed and this is where you are now but what you have now at this stage of your life is infinitely better than whatever you could have had before. Like you're like, well, I've got to let go of the teenage boy completely. There's nothing wrong with that too. I know men from both sides of this. I know men who are just like, you know what? I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna ask my wife if it can be in an open relationship. This isn't something we teach in the porn reboot system, by the way, I'm just saying I know men and I've had clients who are like that. I've seen some who are happy. I've seen some who it's blown their relationship to bits. But more often than not, 
most men need to let go of that part of their life. Many of them, you had the opportunities, but you just didn't do what was necessary. And I am sorry, not sorry because I did something wrong. I mean sorry in a way that I sympathize with you. I really do, because for some years I lived this way, that you had the opportunity to do things, but pornography stole it from you. Instead of going and talking to a woman that you found attractive, when you had that little window of time in your youth that you could have approached a woman and talked to her, you did speak to one woman, two women, three women, and then you married the third because she was the most attractive out of three. There are dudes who are getting married to the most attractive out of 300. And I know dudes like that. Maybe I'm one of those dudes. <laughs> right? But gentlemen, listen. You have to address it one way or the other. The younger you are, listen, if you are under the age of 25, Honestly, my preference is if you are under the age of 30, you should not be, if you're under the age of 30, you should not be in a committed relationship. That's my personal opinion, and sometimes it becomes a professional opinion, depending on the individual I'm speaking to. And if you are under the age of 25, brother, you have so much shit to learn, you're still a fucking teenager. I don't mean you should act like a teenager, you are a grown-ass man, but your brain is not fully developed, right? So you still have work to do. You should be going out there, you should be getting skills, on how to market yourself, how to sell. You should be learning about the changes, the things that are happening online and adapting to them, right? You should be learning about cryptocurrency. You should be learning how to market online. You should be learning how to sell offline and online. Build up some skills. It may not be your thing, but just understand the basics of that. You should be going to the gym and lifting weights. You should be boxing. You should be practicing martial arts. You are young and you have the energy. You should be learning how to speak to women. First of all, learn how to be social, right? Go out there, be social with men and women and build up these three areas of your life. I went through a phase. Let me just end it with this, gentlemen. I went through this phase when I was 20, 21 years old and this is how I got into meditation. Another thing I do not regret, but I wasn't ready for meditation, right? I went through this phase where I listened to people who were talking about spirituality and consciousness and being at peace with yourself and accepting yourself you cannot accept yourself when you are in your 20s you are not fully developed as a man your brain is not developed there's a lot of shit you have not done what i have found is that the truth is found in your own experiences in some things in life you can look at other people an example would be i looked at other people who had some you know experiences, psychedelic experiences, and as a result of this, they progressed in their spiritual path. But these people didn't just pick a random psychedelic. They were also doing other hard drugs at that time. So there was a benefit that I saw, oh, that's interesting. But I was never a hard drug guy. I just never did that. I looked at the impact it had on other people, and I was like, this shit is not worth it. It really isn't worth it. And so I made a decision for myself based on that are you with me but every other thing that i did was based on my own personal experiences i went out there i experienced things it's like oh you say that it's empty you know like being with other women is empty having sex with other women is empty guys it wasn't empty for me there were some really fulfilling experiences there were some super cool chicks right people said like oh you know money is only going to make you unhappy i remember my mom telling me she was just like oh you know like jk you know just be a simple man you know get yourself a nice girl get yourself a house and a good job fuck that shit dude now i'm the one that's kind of like bankrolling a portion of a retirement right and that's because i focused on my finances on building multiple streams of income on learning how to invest and so on Right? When it came to my fitness, I remember people saying like, dude, you know, women don't like dudes who are like big and jacked and bulky and all those things. Dude, when I am sitting at a sweet spot, right? Physically, the sweet spot between, I would say about 200 pounds to 210 pounds. I'm not at my sweet spot right now, right? But when I'm at that sweet spot, I have always been more physically attractive to women. There's a difference between being invisible to women and women thinking that I'm a fucking bouncer 
and being attractive. And it all has to do with literally my body's composition within a 10 pound, let's call it radius, right? And so the moment I put on muscle, suddenly I started being with all sorts of women and people around me just couldn't understand it. They were like, how are you with all these different types of women? Because I was working on these different parts of my life, right? So I'm echoing what I spoke about a few days ago in a video. And what I'm simply saying, gentlemen, is that at the end of the day, these three things, especially for men who are under the age of 35, sometimes even for men who are over the age of 35, these three things are sometimes things which take precedence in your life. I have guys in our group who say, oh, you know, I am struggling to be with women. I'm in love with this woman. Women don't notice me. Women don't find me attractive. And I'm out of curiosity, when I click on these guys' profiles or whatever, I'm just like, dude, you're not maximizing your looks. A lot of these guys facially have great facial aesthetics thrown away. They just throw it away because they eat junk food and they put on too much weight. Drop your body fat, right? Let your facial features show. Put on some muscle, right? These are things that help you out. These are things that are relevant. These are things that are going to help you be more attractive. Sorry, I'm distracted. There are like a lot of people in the park that I'm at. I'm gonna go for a quick run, gentlemen. But I hope you guys found that helpful. Three things that may, at different points in your life, be more important than your recovery from your out-of-control sexual behavior. To be fair, they're all a part of it as well. But I'm talking about prioritizing them. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'll speak to you later on in the week. Bye. Whenever you're ready, here are four ways that Porn Reboot can help you out for free. The first way is to subscribe to our channel and make sure you click on the notification bell to get a new video every other day. The second way is to get a copy of the free book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men. You'll learn about my personal struggle and the lessons I've learned over a decade, as well as strategies for putting together your porn reboot plan and ending your compulsive behavior with pornography or masturbation. So click on the link in the description below this video. The third way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals, entrepreneurs, business owners, guys who work in sales, consulting, or high-level jobs, men who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, the Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's also a link to join in the description below this video. And finally, if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, you want to be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, click on the link in the description below this video that says free coaching call or visit elevatedrecovery.org and click on the link which says book a call.